Let's talk about percent yield today. In this video, I'm going to show you the very basic percent yield problems that it could possibly throw at you. In the next video, we're going to do a long problem from start to finish. Um, and because percent yield problems could look very simple and they can become very complex. Um, by complex, I don't mean like tricky. I mean, there are a lot of steps to it. Um, or they can be very simple like you'll see in this video. So what is percent yield? Percent yield is the idea that when I go in the laboratory, I should be able to figure out my theoretical yield based on my starting materials. So if I only have, you know, one gram of potassium chlorate, how much potassium chloride should I be able to generate from that one gram? Um, and so that's your theoretical yield. That's all those molar conversions that we've done so far in this course. But why would you care about that, all right? Percent yield, why do we care? It's a huge money maker, that's why. Because if I can take one gram and generate, you know, 0.1 grams of potassium chloride, that may not be good enough and it may not be profitable. Whereas if I could take my one gram and have a 99% yield, which means 99% of this is used to generate potassium chloride with not a whole lot of waste or not a lot of incomplete reactions, then I'm gonna have to be a lot more efficient in my process. And so a lot of chemistry is just dedicated to how can I improve my percent yield? If I need to create this synthetic drug that's going to help everybody, help everybody feel better or whatever, how can I make that in the lowest number of steps, with the lowest number of byproducts, with the highest possible percent yield? Okay, and what that's going to be based upon is your experimental yield, which is how much you actually generate, actually create or produce in the laboratory, and your theoretical yield, which is your mathematical conversions from starting materials to final product. And so that's your theoretical yield, whatever in theory you could maximally produce. You generally have an experimental yield that is smaller than your theoretical yield because you are not producing 100% of reactant into product. Whereas you could have a little bit higher if you're measuring incorrectly in the lab, meaning I weighed a sample and I thought it was pure, but instead it had water also on it or something like that. And so you're weighing water plus product, and so that's where your experimental yield will be higher than your theoretical yield. But for the most part, if you're weighing pure product, your experimental yield should be smaller than your theoretical yield, giving you a percentage. So this percent yield is just telling you how efficient a chemical reaction is at converting reactants to products. So what does this look like? Let's do some example problems. We're gonna do three just to sh solve for experimental yield, theoretical yield, and percent yield. We're gonna do one problem where we're solving for each different thing. All right, so the first problem. Let's say we walked into the lab and we produced 1.7 grams of potassium chloride according to this reaction. Then my theoretical yield, I had already done all this and I had done all the math and figured out how much starting material I had and how much I was gonna produce potassium chloride. My math told me that I should theoretically be able to produce maximally 1.9 grams of potassium chloride. So if this is how much I, I know, that's how much I produced, I went in the lab and I experimentally created that, and this is how much I could have produced in theory, what's my percent yield? So if we use this equation and just fill in each of the variables, we get percent yield equals experimental yield divided by my theoretical yield times 100 with units of percent. Now notice your grams are going to cancel, so it's not like grams percent or anything. My only units are this percent sign that are remaining. So you would just, in your calculator, 1.7 divided by 1.9, enter, times 100, and then my units are percent. So in this example, we end up with a percent yield equal to 89%. In this next example, we are given our percent yield. So we maybe know that this reaction always has a 72% yield, or that's more common. And so maybe I'm testing, are my lab skills up to snuff? Is it, am I gonna produce less than that, more than that, et cetera? And so if I were to get the industry standard maybe of 72% yield for this reaction, I just made that number up. Okay. If I'm going to produce 15.3 grams, what then would the theoretical yield have been if I hit that 72% mark right on the head? So in this case, we're given a percent yield 
we're given an experimental yield, that's how much we produced, and I'm asked to solve for the theoretical yield. So in this case, 72% um, equals 15.3 grams, because that's my experimental yield, over my theoretical yield. And notice my units should have been grams of KCL. You cannot, the number one mistake I have here is students will put like grams of one thing over grams of another. Your units need to be the same. Times 100 with units of percent. So to solve for this problem, I move my X to the other side and I move my percentage down. with units of percent. So in this case, in my calculator, I would do 15.3 grams, so 15.3 divided by 72, enter, times 100, and then you're gonna end up, your percentages are gonna cancel with each other, and you're gonna end up with grams. So my final answer is 21 grams of KCL. Notice my sig figs here, where there was two sig figs and 72, three sig figs and 15.3, so my final answer has two significant figures. All right, this is our last and final example where I'm giving you a percent yield. So once again, maybe this is the industry standard. And then I took my number of grams of, cal of, of potassium chloride and I converted it to potassium chloride to create a theoretical yield of 0 0.920 grams. So maybe I know that's my theoretical yield. This is what I'm hoping I can get in the lab is a 91.5% yield. So what then is my desired experimental yield? Let's do that math and find out. So 91.5% equals experimental yield, which is what I'm solving for, grams of KCL over my theoretical yield, 920 grams of KCL times 100 with units of percent. So in this case, I need to get X by myself. So to get X by myself, I divide both sides by 100, and then I multiply both sides by 0 0.920. So that's gonna cause those to cancel, and that's gonna be over here. So in this case now, x equals 0 0.920 times 91.5 with units of percent over 100 with units of percent. So my units are canceling. These still have their units, so grams is still my remaining unit. And now my final answer, once I multiply 0 0.920 times 91.5 divided by 100, is going to be 0 0.842 grams of KCL. Make sure you check your sig figs. It's three because of the three sig figs here, three sig figs here, and then my units are grams. Grams of what? KCL. Because notice, I could have also solved for this other product and asked, what is my theoretical yield of oxygen or something like that? So make sure you include the entire unit. And these are very basic percent yield problems.